Hello. I'm Daniel. I'm Jay Z. This is Just My DIY. When we first got the StarCraft Solo, one of the things we were most intrigued with is its rumored print and cut capabilities. Because it's matteless, they say it can do 16 inches wide, 72 inches long, and that's pretty spectacular. It really is, especially when you consider that most commercial kind of consumer cutters on the market limit you to 8.5 by 11 inches or less for a print and cut. So we attempted something more than that, but less than this. <laughs> and it's somewhere maybe behind here. That's right. We wanted to try to do a four foot leaning porch sign for the holidays using only print and cut. You want to see how we did? Stick around. First thing we got to do is calibrate the machine for print and cut. So we're going to take our pen. You're going to see that there's this little wax cap at the end of it right there and you pluck it off just like that and you put that somewhere safe guard it with your life you will need it later you do not need the cap for the pen <laughs> we're going to take our paper on the mat and slide it into the machine that we got from brilliant vinyl and go ahead and move it around so that we can pull the knife out and insert our pen that's right now no, there's no depth stopper on this, so you're going to have to put it in as far as you think you can and then work with your force. We recommend starting low on the force and just testing until you get a nice clean line. For how we had our pin inserted, we had about a 35 force, but that could be different from you. As always, we did a quick test just to make sure that worked. We got nice clean lines and now we are going to go into the set and click camera, and then click adjust, and hold the okay button in the middle of the arrows until everything turns red. And then we are going to click start. It's gonna draw out a grid pattern over and over again. The center itself, and take a picture. That's right, and then you will click get pick again. And that will take a picture and little red crosshairs will show up on there. We have calibrated before, so ours are in the middle, but you can use the arrow keys to adjust where those crosshairs are. You can also touch screen, but your fingers are really hard for this. We recommend using the arrows. Once you're good, click OK. It will look like that and then make a few beeps and that's how you know your calibration's done. And then you just click the home and you're ready to get to your SVG. This is actually two different images, one from Design Bundles, one from Creative Fabrica. We will link all of our materials, including those images, in the description below. So first we're going to go to Effects and then down to Shadow Layer, parentheses, Contour Cut. This is to create that print thin cut outline that we're going to need to cut around this. We do have a small border, just 0.01. Uh, that we're going to have around the actual design. You'll see the shadow layer shows up on the right side. Now, after many attempts, we realized you need to go to File, Page Setup, and manage your custom sizes. Our printer can only do... 47.24 inches in length. That's right. And so we had to do that in the Page Setup for our page. And then we also needed to go in, once we clicked OK there to save that setting, we also had to go into our mat and change our mat size to eight and a half by 47.24. That's right. It, it took us several rounds to learn this. Save yourself some time. Look up what the length of your printer is willing to deal with ahead of time. Yes, very much so. So once we did that, that obviously changed our mat size because our mat size was about 48 inches before this. And we realized that like our registration marks were off the mat. So we did go in and just delete the shadow layer that we'd already created, got the main image set up exactly where we wanted it on the mat. And then we went back into the effects menu to get that shadow layer. So you'll see us moving this around, centering it as best we can, go up to effects, shadow layer, get that print and cut outline, change the size of the outline to 0 0.01 again, and click OK.
And now we want to do one more thing before we go into the create menu. We're checking our registration marks. Everything's on the page, which is great. Then we're also going to click this handy dandy preview button. That preview button lets you see exactly what the machine plans to cut. We wanted to make sure that looked good, that it wasn't cutting anything extra in the gnome or anything. And then we click done there. And then we go into the create menu. Now, first thing you want to do is click print then cut over there on the bottom left and read all the instructions here. But we went into the print menu. We knew everything was already set up. And so before we click print, the last thing we needed to do is get the vinyl ready. So we have about four feet of vinyl that we're going to take off of this enormous roll. <laughs> And you're going to see it curls right on up like Santa's naughty list. <laughs> but we're going to try and uncurl the curl by reversing the roll and massaging it ever so gently into place. Which happens to be Daniel's specialty, massage. Massaging rolls of paper, absolutely. I've been doing it my entire life. <laughs> uh, these hands are skilled. You definitely don't want to crease your paper or somehow like get the backing out of line. So just be gentle, but it definitely helped to uncurl that. Now this printer did have a stress getting it set up for the paper to go into it, but we did. We finally figured out the right way. We set ours up there a little bit on the printer card and just kept helping it unroll so the tension stayed appropriate. And just kept on unrolling it. And for those of you who are curious, this is a custom made printer cart. We get that question a lot when we showed this uh, printer, printer cart combination in our video. So we will link that video for you here in case you're curious how we made it. Now we have our four foot long banner. Yay! We do trim it off just a little bit. We want to make sure and give the solo enough room to grip it around those registration marks, but we didn't want to leave all the extra paper in there because that would hurt alignment. So we do get it aligned onto the solo that we got from Brilliant Vinyl. Thanks, Brilliant Vinyl. The solo is awesome. <laughs> we want to make sure to get this as straight as possible in the machine and then... Get the knife over the registration mark not the camera. Yes. So once everything's set up, we backed our speed down quite a bit because we were really nervous. <laughs> so once we got our speed and pressure set we wanted, we clicked next and then start scan and crossed our fingers. And then it went to town. There's one, two, off to the races, three, and there's the last. And then it just goes to work. I mean, it's just like like a bad guitar solo. <laughs> because we knocked that speed down so much, this did take about 15 minutes. However, it did such a good job on this print and cut. I mean, as soon as we caught all of those registration marks, we felt really good about this process. Um, and so we just sat back on the couch and watched it go. And go. And go. Until we took it out of the machine. Now it's time to weed. <laughs> Normally on a graphic this size, you'd probably want to have like what we call weeding boxes to make the weeding easier, but we did not want to complicate this process any more than it already was. So we just kept a pair of scissors handy and kind of peeled a little and then trimmed off the excess. The last thing you want is to let that scrap vinyl get stuck to your design. So we definitely recommend anytime you're doing a weed that's pretty large, if you did not do those boxes in your cut, keep those scissors handy. It will make things go a lot smoother. Now we're setting up the backing boards for the banner. Woo so this is a five millimeter board. It is just a scrap piece of wood that happened to be the right size in the garage. So we're gonna start off with a nice light sand, probably 100 grit on the first one, 220 grit on the second, because we want it nice and smooth to promote adhesion. We're just using a basic acrylic craft paint with a little bit of iridescence to it. Not gonna belabor the building of this, just gonna show you the few steps we did. 
I uh, wanted to make sure we kept the brush strokes out of it to keep it nice and smooth. So we used nice long strokes and we did several layers because the thicker the paint, the deeper the brush strokes. And again, trying to avoid those. So several layers later, we're going to seal it with polycrylic. We love putting a layer of polycrylic in between paint or stain and vinyl because uh, vinyl adheres really well to it. Big tip, never shake your polycrylic. That will create bubbles. Always stir it and use a spare cup to wipe or paint from. That way you don't get any extra particles in your main can. And apply. With a shop towel. Again, trying to avoid any strokes or anything weird like that. Two hours later, we are going to apply another layer of polycrylic. That's right. You always want to do a light sanding in between layers. Wipe off that sanding dust. Again, stir, don't shake. Using another shop towel and nice thin layer before Daniel cuts the next backing board. Yeah, we thought one board wasn't enough, so we're setting it up. And a, 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 what we a backing board? Yeah. A backing backing board. <laughs> <laughs> To help give it some depth and perspective. Yeah, kind of like a backward frame on it. So cut, then sand, and hit it with a can of red spray paint. We did a few layers on this. We'll just show you the first one. Now it's time to put it all together. So we're going to bring it into a nice warm space. Use wood glue as the as the main primary holder. We'll use a super glue as a tacking agent for our age old wood glue super glue combo. We've been a fan of this combo for quite some time. We had hash marks made on the red board to center the silver board, and then we trained the kettlebells to sit down. <laughs> Several hours later, we peel all the kettlebells back, fill out the spare pieces of wood, and we have a double backing board. Now we have a long sheet of transfer paper. Well, paper, transfer. Transfer tape, transfer paper, same difference. Okay, yeah, that's good to know. <laughs> I'm glad I knew that. <laughs> we like to peel back the first couple of inches of our transfer tape anytime we're laying down a really big piece. This way we can line it up, then use something nice and long like our cutter uh, to scrape it down and avoid wrinkles. So if you're super talented, you can do that one person, but a second person can be in really handy to keep it, the transfer paper aligned. And here we are centering it on our backing boards. And same technique, trim off some of the top. We're gonna actually massage everything into place now that we realize that it might've actually been peeling up a little bit because it wasn't quite adhered. <laughs> we definitely forgot to burnish that down. So, you know, don't skip that step, it's important. And now we're only going to remove part of the backing to the vinyl as we lay that down over the backing boards, a little layer, a little bit at a time. And the camera might have cut out before we show you that we're just going to, once we have everything sealed down real well, bend the transfer paper back at 180 degrees and peel it really closely, making sure we don't uptake any of the design along with the peeling back of it. You can see us doing a nice massage job to make sure everything stayed put. <laughs> and there we go. We now have our four foot tall porch sign and are getting ready for the holidays. There you go. An almost four foot long print and cut, cut all in one go on the Starcraft Solo. So if you like that little rhyme, as well as the rest of this video, you should click the like button, subscribe, ring the bell, leave your nice own little rhyme in the comment line. Mmm. <laughs> know that everything that we needed to do this is listed down below. Also in the description are our social channels. Please connect with us across platforms. We love hearing from you guys. As well as, don't forget to check out our blog, JustMyDIY.com. For now, we're going to get this on the porch. Happy holidays, and thanks for watching. You were trying to create another ride, weren't you? No. <laughs> <laughs>